Hey everybody! Hi. Welcome to TFT Tarot for Today, Divine Dabblings with Oberon and me, Banshee. Welcome to the special unboxing of the Tarot of Opposition. The Tarot of Opposition. It's a really cool new deck. Uh, is it relative? It is it's new. Relatively new? new. Okay. Um, it's by P Pierluca Zizi and Michelle Dialosio, and it's of course a low scarab scarabeo deck. Scarabeo, yes. So let's take a look. It's a beautiful box. I don't know if mm -hmm. you want to show it on the other camera there, Alrighty. Mr. O. Oh, look! Let's walk <laughs> through the doorway. <laughs> That's so cute. So yeah, there's, there's, it's so nice. I think you get the idea there. You have the light and the dark aspects of the card, or I, I don't want to say dark, light and shadow, or upright and reversed, all, um, you know, really depicted in its own way on each card. I like the box. It opens from the top down like that. Beautiful. So the box has the opposing images of some of the ones that yeah. the cover uh, showed us. So I really, really like this deck. Uh, I gave it to Mr. O, bought it for him. He promises I can use it from time to time, and you know what? I'm going to take him up on that offer. <laughs> well, I do want to use it in the regular show to some degree, but I, as soon as I saw it, I said, oh, this would really work into a project or two I'm doing. You know, I like to do the special readings that maybe combine different decks for a layered effect. Mm -hmm. And uh, something that I'm planning on doing uh, in the very near future, this could be uh, a part of that. So I'm very excited for that. I'm just looking here. You know, this is a low Scarabo deck, so there are different, the different languages. Um, there is one reading here that I see that they give it's a six card reading interpreting light and shadow um so you know this is a 128 page book but remember portion of it is in you know what four different languages I believe something like mm -hmm. that. they're normally like that yeah usually it's German uh Italian or Spanish yeah. um English so that's the booklet and that image on there is the image of the backs the back of the, the cards. cards. So let's go on with this great unboxing here. Now I think in general the overall premise is pretty apparent. It looks to me like, and I think it's explained in the booklet, that it's basically kind of looking at both the reverse and upright meaning of the card or the idea of the ambiguities between those meanings or the ambiguity between uh, some other of the imageries in there to affect the idea that you could actually look at this and say, which is it? Or try to use your intuitive process or other cards to determine how to use it. Yeah, sometimes it seems a little ambiguous to me which is really the positive or negative oh. element. I just think it makes it more interesting. For yeah, that's sure. a good observation too. We were looking um, at that and we yeah. thought, well, the dark side one looks, or the the reversed one looks, you know, more positive than the upright one because it so, depends on the meaning of the actual card. So, without further ado, let's get going. But All bear right. with us because I think Mr. O should probably put it one way and flip it over so you could see the image on both parts of the card. So here we go with the fool, starting with the fool first. And here and there I may in you know throw in some commentary. But not with this one so much. We'll keep going. And that's the reverse side of the fool. Yeah, you know it almost looks like I will say one thing that one side looks like a little more cavalier or careless attitude mm -hmm. than the other. The magician here I think it's pretty apparent the you know what's what's top and what's bottom here well, <laughs> for in, want of a better word in some decks uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. the older uh, decks the magician was the juggler and he had a table like that and he had a hat like that because there is that idea of the figure eight represented oh, true. in the curl of the hat those, so I think it's a those pro tools to that. would not be in disarray true enough so there's the high priestess and Beautiful card. Other than darker, she's almost the same. I mean, I think there's a little bit more sensuality there, but she is rather similar. The Empress, where it looks fruitful and barren on the other end of it. Yes. 
the Emperor. So again, I think this is a very nice card too. I mean, it, our pictures probably really don't do some of the subtleties justice with the faces and stuff. But this one I think you'll see right away here with the Pope, uh, the, uh, the, the Hierophant. Uh, you notice there he seems a little bit more congenial. And this one is very, very hard line looking in a way. So, I mean, I don't know. What is upright and what's reversed with that? I'd almost think that's more the... Right, you know? because the traditional idea of the Hierophant mm -hmm. is that uh, he's a little bit more uh, about the orthodoxy and right. the control aspects. So, yeah, it's kind of interesting that it's actually represented more in the uh, reverse image. But I think it's fascinating. And here we have the lovers. This is a cool card. This is a little bit different. <laughs> oh, interesting. I yes. know. It's the female and the male is underneath there. And they're striving it's showing the each polarities, other. you know, for sure, that the lovers, and they're striving towards each other, yes, you know, reaching for the same things. We all have the same needs. And there's Chariot. Strength. You can see the gentle approach and the more uh, aggressive approach. It's almost like one of those, you know, cat things. Spit it up. Come on. Let go of that. <laughs> <laughs> the Hermit. I love this one. You have to see it from the distance because they sort of really merge into each other in a different way than the other cards have That's shown true. us. That's and true. And I, I think Good that point. quality sort of represents the idea that there's more of a continuum in mm -hmm. the hermit's behaviors or meanings. The wheel of fortune. Likewise, a wheel is a wheel. So you're either on top or the bottom or maybe somewhere in between. Justice is interesting. Justice looks a little like, oh, I don't care on the bottom. <laughs> you know, yes, or it's something. Like, I want my wine and Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> something like that, Mr. O. Uh, the Hanged Man. <clears throat> Which is interesting. He, it doesn't look like he's hanging either way, but one way he seems to be more in turmoil. You know, with the hanging. And the other one looks more like, yeah, I'm going to make this sacrifice willingly. I think that a lot of these cards, the way that middle part kind of uh, maybe sort of blends, it's a liminal feeling like maybe this is the, the intersectionality between those points in a way. I really like this death card, Mr. O. What do you have to say, Scorpio? Because on the one hand, you have, you know, death, you're being led to the light. On the other hand, you have that stagnation, that lack of change. The light in the, the other card, the too, is indicative of, of a new day, a new beginning, new growth. Whereas this side, you know, shows the darkness of stagnation. Drudgery. And, yeah, you yeah. Know, despair mm -hmm. and drudgery. Temperance. I like that it looks like. Does it look like stardust or water on the one hand, and the other hand looks like it's sand coming out? Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. And again, the, the forms kind of merge in the middle. I'm sorry. I'm just glancing at some of these cool cards. A devil. <laughs> oh, yes. And so this one actually does go a long ways towards really... Uh, creating a dichotomy because the devil, of mm -hmm. course, would maybe be angelic in another way of looking at it. Very nice. And they are very well drawn. The coloring is just about spot on. The tower. This one's almost subtle because you really do have to turn it over and focus differently to see that other tower. It's fascinating. I almost feel like the the other one, you know, the reversed or the dark side seems to indicate the 
uh, the idea, the concept here that uh, my how the mighty have fallen. Uh huh. You know where this one here is kind of like more. There is light. There is illumination through this. Try to understand what just happened. Yeah. Try. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> nice, Mr. O. I give you credit for that one. The star. And I like that because, of course, they're sort of once again reaching or positioning towards each other in a way. The moon. Beautiful. Yes, I like that one too. The sun, where it looks like the sun has fried those sunflowers, and the boy just seems very sorrowful on that bottom side there. Yeah, see? But I love the imagery. I love the top, the sunflowers. Yes, he needs to find the fun. And it's got Ukraine's colors there. Awesome. <laughs> the blue and blue white. And blue. <laughs> or yellow, I'm sorry, blue and yellow. Oh, my goodness. All right, Judgment. I really, truly like this one, too. What do you think of that? I'm going to see if he has anything to add. Uh, uh, I well, like a three. <laughs> That's addition. <laughs> well, I like the, look at the the trumpets, number one. Um, you the know, one sort of looks like a sea shower, organic -y in a way. True, but I'm thinking here that... You know, one is blowing out this blue, and if you look in the images, do you see it there? There's an a me. There's a there's a, a fetus, and this and a is skull. a skeleton. In the you see that. So one is more about regeneration, and one is more about decay. Right. Fascinating. It's fascinating. I like this deck, Mister O. Give it back. <laughs> and then the world. And the world. I like the I like the one where it's kind of uh, like they've stepped outside the world, maybe. This one, the top. Yeah, one? Yeah, the bottom one actually, where. Well, like it's a dystopian. Or they turned world. their back on the world. I don't know. They're looking at some pretty grim stuff, if you ask me. It's this open to interpretation. Nice, the Ace of Cups. The two, definitely picking up the flavor of the two, both upright and reversed. Yep. Nailed it. Now, the three is interesting because there's only one person in here, but I like it. I still like the imagery because it's it does speak to the feel of the card, I think, a little bit here. A celebration or remorse. Now, I do have my quibbles with the Four of Cups because I don't look at the Four quite that way. Um, it looks pretty negative on the bottom, the shadow side, and um not sure how I feel about that. Right. Uh, I think but this one would be challenging. Here. Yeah, because I don't think the cup should be broken. I think when reversed, there's new opportunities afoot that you are now ready to receive. So, I don't know. I'd have to think about that one a little bit. The five. And again, you know, when you think about it, remember, the f this... Let's throw this one up here as it is, and I want to point something out here. Because this is usually, I feel, the reversed look at the five, and this is the upright. So when you have this deck where it looks dark on the one hand and lighter on the other, that doesn't necessarily mean the dark is the reversed interpretation. But I think that plays to the idea about what they wanted in terms of being able to interpret the idea that mm -hmm. these these blended things represented more consideration on your part to really sure. challenge yourself to say what is the negative what is the opposition to the thought or the wish or whatever it is the six of cups i like that the child without the father 
The Seven of Cups is really interesting because on the one hand, you have somebody who's really into the dreams, you're know, having wonderful dreams, and on the other hand, those very same dreams and choices turn into nightmares. Certainly anxiety. <laughs> you know, the anxiety of having to choose or what's coming at you next. Too many things. <laughs> and here's the Eight of Cups. Uh, that, too, is a good card. I like that version. Yeah, I like it because in one he's walking away, one he's walking towards. You know, on the one hand, the nine here to me, I could be wrong, but the nine here to me on the one hand looks like uh, achievement and getting what you desire, and on the other hand, I feel it means getting too much of what you desire, uh, the uh, like an overindulgence kind of card. The ten. Uh, the page. I like this knight. On the one hand, he's dashing and he's carrying that cup up high, and then on the reverse, he's emptying it out in despair or sad, you know, mm -hmm. sorrow. Oopsie, the queen. And the king, who on the one hand looks like he's drank something really sublime, and on the other hand it looks like he has a bitter taste in his mouth. <laughs> so one way of thinking about this is that I, I could think a question would be, well, how do you tell which side is reversed or whatever, you know, or how do you read them, you know, and I think the idea is, is that however they fall, they're an invitation for you to kind of invoke both presences. The blending of both. Both presences mm -hmm. and to maybe tip the scale one way or the other, depending on which one is on top. And maybe what cards are surrounding as well. That too. All right. Yep. So I love this one. The Ace of Pentacles. Oh, yeah. This Look is at classic. how on the one hand, the gentle touch to the uh, pentacle. On the other hand, we're grabbing at it. I don't even have to turn this one upside down. It's just clear right from that. Yeah. That's great. The two. <clears throat> balance and uh, imbalance. Or maybe it's somebody from the hollow earth trying to break through. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one, too, though. The three. <clears throat> yeah, the four of pentacles. There we go, Mr. O. like that one. The Five of Pentacles is interesting to me, too, because on the one hand, you have somebody who's actually uh, trying, you know, putting their hands out like, please help me. And on the other hand, they seem to be totally in their old world and in despair here, not thinking that any help is available. <clears throat> the Six... This one will probably cause some folks a little bit of, of questioning, but there is a broken pentacle in the lower six, the reverse side. And, of course, the card speaks to the idea about our generosity, how we help others, how we, you know, accept generosity. So it's kind of interesting. Oh, yeah, the seven, the seven. Well, hmm... What do you make of that? That might be a complicated one, too. Because this one looks like they have some... Reap their harvest. They've reaped their harvest, and on the other side, it looks like they uh, have some harvest, too. Yeah, but they're not as happy with it for some reason. I know. They're so like... the interpretation may be very different from the actual one. We'll have to see what that brings there. Yeah. Interesting, though. I like it. Oh, no argument. The eight. Yes. Oh, okay. 
And of course, most of us know the eight reversed or upright talks about how well we learn and apply ourselves, our skills and our talents. Interesting. The nine. Wait, is that the nine? Yes, it is. Okay. Yes, it is. You're right. I didn't see this one. Yep. Well, it's kind of an interesting card, too, because the Nine of Pentacles is usually a solitary person. <clears throat> well, the suggestions may be more selfishness, too. Yeah, right? you know, showing kind of selfish in here is more generous. Yeah, this, right? I think that's a good point. That's a very good point. And here's the Ten. I like that. That's really awesome. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Let's flip that. Friends even during hard times, friends and family. Our page of pentacles. That's fascinating. So on the one hand, he's holding it, uh, the pentacle and the book, and on the other hand, the pentacles in the book. So in other words, he's only getting his education to make money in a greedy fashion. On the other side, it looks as though I he's feel inspired. he's inspired. His gold is in his education. He feels he's reaping gold from just learning. You know, the picture doesn't show him inspired so much, but as a sense of confidence or mm -hmm. ownership of some sort. Okay, let's see what we have here. Right. Okay, we have the knight. Again, holding it up high or not. <laughs> I don't know, that one kind of looks pretty similar to me in some ways. Right, so their their take may very well be that either way, the initial essence of the Knight of Pentacles is sort of a determination. It may be uh, slower or less appreciable at times, or maybe, you know, even uh, more forceful. The queen? <laughs> yeah, what do you make of that? Is on the one hand she's pregnant, and... I no, maybe not. I think it's about her looking at herself. So their yeah. sense maybe of, uh, well, the Queen of Pentacles, I don't know. This sort of takes it away from... I think she sees the beauty in herself here and okay. values herself, self-love, and here is more self, uh, uh, self-loathing. Self-loathing. Or deceit of the self in a way. Yeah. Or not really caring for others. I mean, those are the traditional meanings, so... Sure. And the king of pentacles. Nice look. Oh, a little bit more stern. Let's move on to the wands, the ace of wands. On the one hand, there's a wand of growth. On the other hand, there's a wand of, wow, it looks burnt out. That's <laughs> what it looks like. And here is the two. Wow. That's very evocative. Climbing towards a goal, reaching for something higher, or not. <laughs> yes, and of course, a lot of times the two of wands is already talking about the sense of attainment. But I always feel there is a sense of still plugging forward or plans not coming to naught. Here's the three. Nice. This one to me doesn't quite resonate the way I normally would with it either, the Four of Wands, TFT's party card. I will say here one thing, though, that it looks as though here is the big celebration over everything we've accomplished. This other side is just too harsh for me. I've never thought, thought of the Four of Wands as a negative card. But I will say that sometimes I feel the Four of Wands just indicates, well, it's time to get back to work. You still have some things to do. You've set something in motion that is really good. But there's more work that needs to be done. The positive and negative sides of conflict or, uh, you know, the, the clash of ideas. Right. The top side, they look casual and maybe, uh, you know, little, mm -hmm. like they're a ninja training, the little pajama drawstring panties or pajamas. The five of But ones. the other side, then it's like, no, we're fighting. <laughs> we're in conflict. <laughs> 
Oh boy. Well, wait a minute. Let me just see something. Oh yeah, I love this. Okay, the six of wands, the ticker tape parades. Look how how dashing and how proud he is. But look what happens when you let ego take over. You know, that's the difference there is your ego getting in the way. You know, who wants to celebrate you when it's all about you? Good take, Banshee. Thank you, Mr. O. You're welcome. Okay, the Seven of Wands. Oh, yeah, yeah. I want to see if you have anything to say about that. It doesn't exactly show the higher ground here, but it does show somebody who's willing to stand up for themselves as opposed to... Somebody who is not. Who's... Maybe taking more of a defensive posture than an active posture. So this would definitely bring a little bit of further intro introspection, I think. Well, there's the Eight of Wands. <laughs> Whoa! Energy uh, in control and energy... Oops! Burning you out. <laughs> it's like Sunny diving on the table during our oh, show. Oh, no! <laughs> no! And this is okay for the Nine of Wands. It shows somebody readying themselves for battle and the other way just really thinking, I'm done with this. And here's the Ten of Wands, too, with the interesting uh, element of, you know, what happens when you're trying to do too much as opposed to, you know, balancing your workload more, you know, and making sure that you can manage it. The page. The night with all that energy and enthusiasm on the one hand, and then that just feeling of burnout or spent energy on the other. The queen who looks absolutely magnetic on the one hand, and just a little bit more somber on the other. She looks very seductive on the one hand, and on the other, okay. But, you know, a little bit different of an approach there. And the King of Wands as well. On to our last group, the Swords. Ooh. Yikes. There sure is a difference with the Ace of Swords when you handle it from the handle or the sword blade. Ouch. <laughs> yes. Kind of painful there. <laughs> well, and the Two of Swords, once again, Mr. O, what do you make of that one? Well, the first, the top one does sort of look like we normally see it, sort mm -hmm. of this stalemate or this st inertia of a sort. The second one says, bad choice. <laughs> you went the wrong way. <laughs> you had time to think about it, but you still didn't kind of do it right. And of course, that could be a little bit different from the standard card. The Three of Swords, however you slice it, not the perfect card, but the one hand shows you rising again, you know, and usually that's in the reversed position, that you're able to overcome some of the pain and anxiety and sorrow that you've experienced from a breakup or loss. Card number four, of course, the Four of Swords, the healing element, rest and repose as opposed to kind of a Death and stagnation, but you know, and the and, and so again, this doesn't really show a lot of get up and go here. But that bright side does show that you are maybe moving back into the world of light once more. Card five, ooh, the five of swords. Always a challenging card for me. Either way, it looks as though, like here, you know, you may have gotten away with. Well, uh, you may have gotten away with something, you know, but there's no real victory there. And on the other hand, you recognize that, you know, in defeat, there's a lot of, or, you know, when you harm somebody 
or you act aggressively, there are recriminations. There are things that you have repercussions. Let's put it that way. The Six of Swords. I like that. That's pretty evocative. Do you want to stay with the train wreck or do you want to <laughs> move to calmer shores? Yeah, that one is pretty stark. But it's one of those cards that always kind of calls out. It's it's just a stark image in most decks. This is a good one. The Seven of Swords. On the one hand, they're yours for the taking. Go ahead and swipe some. But uh-oh, look, somebody decided to lock them up. <laughs> so making it a little bit tougher for you. And here's the interesting Eight of Swords. Yes, it is. You can break free. And there it is. You don't have to sit in that chair. You can get yourself up. The Nine of Swords. This definitely shows the anxiety and then the clarity, you know, on the reversed. This is one of those cards where I would read that as the upright and that is the reversed. My personal take. Sure. Well, let's see what they've done with that Ten of Swords here. Uh, what do you think of this one? It's a toughie. Yeah, it is. Um. <laughs> <laughs> All I'm going to say is, you know, there's, you know, when, when we suffer betrayal or hurt or loss, I feel <coughs> even on either end, if you are healing from it, you know, you still feel that sting. You can move on, but you feel that sting and it will uh, affect your actions in the future. You know, you are smarter now and sharper for the experience. Well, the, the one image that I have topside sort of suggests the sense of how you isolate yourself too once this happens it's or, a good or point. as a result of that. Mm -hmm. So here we have the page of swords. Oh, cute. What do you notice about this card? Is one female? On the one hand, that one right there at the top has the sun on his shoulders there on his cloak. And on the bottom, there's the moon. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Very observant of me. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, an interesting dichotomy. The queen. Holding the sword upright and kind of tilting it and uh, maybe not so balanced there in the reverse. It sort of suggests a little bit of reluctance, which of course is sort of what you get from, from the card reversed in a way. And this is really interesting, this one, because this is the king. On both of his shoulders he has the sun and the moon emblems, but on the reverse they're not there. And I feel like with the sun and the moon emblem on his shoulders upright, it indicates the light and the enlightenment that he has as opposed to when he's in the reverse, you know, what kind of decisions he's going to be making. Wow. Awesome deck. I really feel it's vibrant. I do mm -hmm. like the finish oh, on it. It's kind of a glossy, maybe cardboard. There's a thickness to it. I'm not sure how well it will really uh, wear in time, but I just think they're beautiful and vibrant and a uh, job well done. Yeah, it's going to be a joy to use these and add them to the stable of decks we use. Uh, we just think it's a very awesome deck. So thank everybody for thank joining you. us for this special <laughs> unboxing of the Tarot of Oppositions. And now we can start using it in our streams. Right. Woohoo! <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you so much and hope to see you soon at one of our shows. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye.